in the lesson on tonight, uh, I'm going to read something out of the book. It says, however, using a broad word like sin leaves many believers in the dark as far as confession is concerned because they cannot think of any sin they should confess and forsake. So the writer says we should take time to identify some specific sins the word of God says will be a hindrance to prayer and understand that sin is a hindrance uh, to prayer. And he says read the following references and list three sins. So we first go to James chapter uh, uh, 4 uh, verse 3. Uh, in your Bibles, James chapter 4, uh, uh, verse 3. Can somebody just read that scripture, verse 3? Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask a miss that he may consume it upon your lust. Thank you. So James, he's speaking about asking and uh, uh, um, part of prayer is asking. So James he says ye or you ask and receive not. Why? Because you ask amiss. Amiss means out of order. You're asking for the wrong or improper motives. You know, you're asking in a faulty manner. Because you ask amiss that ye may be, that, that ye may consume it upon your lust. So what James is saying you're just asking in prayer uh, 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 to satisfy your lust. You're not asking because you need it or, and we have to be careful. Even some of our wants can appeal to the lust. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Sister Lakeisha Hall. Amen. So we have to be careful uh, 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 in well, what we're asking for and the way that we ask. For. So James, he, he speaks on that church. Uh, so we're not asking for the good of the kingdom. We're really not asking for the good of ourselves. We're just asking to satisfy our lusts. Here it is. Uh, it says, hmm. James mentions the most common problems in prayer. He says, not asking or asking for the wrong things or asking for the wrong reasons. And that's good because some people do need some things, but they won't pray and ask God. So they never receive them, church. So that's not asking. Um, and he says asking for <laughs> the wrong things. Again, I always use the analogy of, hey, I want to live on Lake Drive. Well, how are you going to pay for the house? <laughs> you know, so you're asking for the wrong things or, you know, or, or the Bible talks about covetedness or, yeah, there it is. Or asking for, you see what your neighbor, your neighbor has and you want that. So we're asking for the wrong things. It's, so we have to be careful about that. Uh, we're asking for the wrong reasons. Praying that you want God to do harm to somebody. Or praying that uh, <laughs> Lord, uh, uh, Lord, uh, I pray they lose a position so I can get promoted. God's not going to honor a prayer like that, church. So we have to be careful. Have you ever heard somebody pray for the wrong things? Okay. Yeah. See, and with some, they're in sincere that prayer, but they're praying for the wrong things or for the wrong reasons. And James says, do you talk to God at all? And that's, and that's really, that's a million dollar question. Do you talk to God at all? And I always encourage, I try to encourage people to talk to the Lord. Talk to him. <laughs> he speak back to you. You know, scripture says you have, well, we just talked about it. You have not because you have not. So that means that you, you have not because a person won't open their mouth and speak to God. Hmm. Then he says, when you do, 
What are you talking about? <laughs> James, this, this commentary is saying, what are you talking about when you do talk to God? Here it is. And he says, do you ask only to satisfy your desires? So James is saying when you're talking to God or you've been praying to God, are you just praying to satisfy your desires? If we are, then we're praying, we have the wrong motives in prayer. We have the wrong motives in prayer. It's all right to desire some things, but we need to be praying more than for our desires. And he says, ask another question. Do you seek God's approval for whatever, for what you already plan to do? And that's good. You already plan to do it. But what James is saying, now you're going back to God asking for approval. So what James is saying, what you're doing was not orchestrated by God. It was orchestrated uh, by an individual person. So now they want to go do it, but they want God to put his stamp of approval on it instead of seeking God first. So the order is backwards. They want God to approve what they want to do instead of seeking him first. What they already plan to do, let me put it like that. They already put it in motion that they're going to do it. He says, your commentary says, your prayers will become powerful when you allow God to change your desires so that they perfectly correspond to his will for you. So that's good. Our prayers become powerful when we allow God to change our desires so they perfectly correspond to his will for us. <laughs> I got two prayers I've been praying about and, and those, those, those prayers fit right into what James uh, with this commentary just said. Those two prayers and those prayers, I'm asking God to change my desires or, hmm, or what I'm thinking so that they can perfectly correspond to his will. In other words, in those two areas, I'm asking God to change my thinking because my thinking is not right in those two areas. See, and, and since I'm praying for that, that's a prayer for me to be in the will of God. So sometimes we have to pray uh, to ask God to help us to be in his will. Let me share another commentary. Is that helpful so far? All right. Uh, okay. Scripture says, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. And I want to give you, I'm not going to get deep into them, but this is good. It's 12 reasons for unanswered prayer, then we'll get back to the book. And I'm just going to enlist them. I'm not going to get deep into them. Number one is lust. We know what those are. Uh, number two is murderers. Three is covetousness, again, wanting what somebody else has. Uh, the fourth reason for an answer prayer is fighting and war. <laughs> if prayer can't be answered if there's no peace. Number five, asking a miss to satisfy lust. We just talked about that. Uh, number six, adulteries. People are in adulterous relationships, cheating on their husband or wife, but they're asking God to they're praying to God and asking God to either bless them with something else. God says, no, let's deal with this adultery you committed, see? Uh, number seven, this is a big one, friendships. <laughs> Some people's prayers are not answered because of their friendships, the crowd they're hanging with. <laughs> that, that, that crowd is not a God. But they constantly run with that crowd, but then you're asking God to bless you. You know, God is saying, no, you're not in the right, but you're in the wrong crowd. 
The crowd needs you to see it. Um, help me, Lord. Notice how the unbeliever, they always want us to come to the bar. But they don't ever want to come to church. And some of us, they get us out there. But they ain't going to come to church. See, God's not saying to... All right, there he is. If you're a friend of the world, see, those people you hang with, they do worldly things. The things they do have no regard uh, for God, but you're hanging out with them, but you're still praying, asking God to bless you. See, sometimes we have to separate our people. Uh, I know what I meant. Separate ourselves from people in order for God to bless us. You want scripture? Go to Genesis 12. Uh, uh, you don't got to go there now, but I'm just saying, go read Genesis 12 when God told Abraham to get out of his country. He had to leave his land in order to be blessed. See? Sometimes you got to separate yourself, cut people loose in order for God to bless you and to move forward in Christ. So that's a big one right there. Uh, uh, I want to tell person say, well, you know, that's, that's, that's my homie. That's my ace. Yeah, that may be. But your homie is hindering you from moving forward in Christ. You got to see that. Number of uh, the eighth reason for an unanswered prayer. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to get any deep into it. It's pride. Ooh, pride, yeah. pride is a big one. Pride, you can't tell a person nothing. Now, if <laughs> you can't tell a person, how do they expect to be blessed or God to answer their prayer? And there are even some, uh, there are even some people in the body of Christ. They only feel that God Almighty Himself can talk to them, can tell them something. See, that's a spirit of pride. And that's one reason for unanswered prayer because of pride. I see this all the time. And number nine, self-explanatory. Ninth reason, rebelling against God. If you're rebelling against God, he ain't going to answer your prayer. It, it's just that simple. <laughs> I don't need to explain that one. Number ten, backsliding and sin. Again, sin is one reason and backsliding uh, reasons for unanswered prayer. God says you're praying for these things, but your relationship is not right with him. God says, no, you need to get you need to restore the fellowship, the relationship with him, and then we could talk about blessing you or answering those other prayers in the manner that you desire. Number 11, double minus or doubt. We talked about that. Going back and forth, wavering. And number 12, <laughs> this is a big one too. Misuse of the tongue. That's a big reason for unanswered prayer. Misuse of the tongue. Speaking out of order. Mm. No regard for authority. <laughs> Uh, Bible talks about backbiting, black backbiting, talking about people, blasphemy. The Bible talks about being a busybody in other folks' business. The scripture says no man can bridle on the tongue, so it takes prayer and the power of the Holy Ghost to, to bridle our tongues. I'm telling you, I've seen people talk themselves <laughs> In the, in the natural and in the spiritual. I've seen people talk themselves out of things simply because they kept running their mouth. I've seen people where, I'll use this example, they have asked somebody to borrow some money and the person was going to do it. But they kept running their mouth and the person put their money back in their pocket and did not give it to them. So that tongue, misuse of the tongue, huh? speaking out of order, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. See? 
The tongue is terrible. Speaking out of order. Here's one. Speaking against the man or woman of God that God has placed over you. You may not agree with them. You know, pray for them. You know, pray, pray. If they're doing something that's not right, pray for them. Don't go to others gossiping and speaking against them. Pray for them. That's very important. God sees that. Here it is. It says, this passage. Huh. You know, some people come against authority because of their pride. Can't no, can't, I don't know why I'm back on this. Can't nobody tell them nothing, and that's why they're not blessed. It says here, this passage should never be taken by the Christian as an excuse for unanswered prayer. And let me put a pen right there. God is working, he's, he's working on me. He's not through with me. God is working on us all, and he's not through with us. But we don't use those or anything as an excuse to sin. By, by doing so automatically, classes himself as, as lustful. He's talking about these 12. Murderers, covetous, adulterers, worldly, proud, sinful, and blasphemous. And blaspheming is a, you're speaking an untruth about a person. It is any wonder that God does not answer the prayers of such people. And he asked a question in the commentary, would you? <laughs> would you answer the prayer of someone who just keeps running their mouth out of order? Come on, y'all can say it. <laughs> no, I say it for you. No man can ask amiss if he is in Christ and acts according to the promises. See, there's also, if I can add one to that, a, a hardened heart will keep, a, keep, keep, keep will keep prayers from being answered. A hard heart to the word of God. A hard heart to other believers. A hard heart to the man or woman of God. That'll keep prayers from being answered, church. So what we're saying is a person has to work on if they're Falling un under any of those conditions, a person needs to work on their inner man. So, if per so instead of praying for all this other stuff, their prayer should be, Lord, help me. <laughs> you know, help me with this sin. Or help me, uh, 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 help me from having a spirit of pride or having a hardened heart. Lord, help me against being rebellious. Say amen. See? And some people thrive in rebellion, church. I don't know why I'm still on this. They, 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 they gloat in it. They brag about it. That they, that, that, that no rule, that they don't have to obey any rule. See, rules or laws were made for the lawless. Not for born again believers. Because we follow God. Which means we don't obey the laws of the land. Hmm. So, the first, uh, the first answer for that in our book, James 4 and 3, our answer should be selfishness. Selfishness is a hindrance to prayer. It's all about the person. All about what they want, what they can get. They don't care about anybody else. That's not a God. Hmm. What's in it for me? Praise God. Go to Mark 11 and 25 in your Bible. Mark 
bless you, Evangelist Virginia. Praise the Lord. Mark 11 and 25. Matthew, Mark. See, if you truthfully want to grow in prayer, part of your prayer will be you asking God to deal with you in those areas where you're being convicted in. Mark 11 and, and, and 25. The scripture says, And when ye stand praying, yeah, forgive. When you pray, you, you need to forgive. If you have an all against any, if you're in a quarrel or you got a problem against a problem with somebody, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. I'll take the verse 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Now, I know we've talked about this scripture a lot, but isn't it amazing how some pray, want God to forgive them, <laughs> but they don't want to forgive that person? God says, no. You need to go back. You need to forgive them. You want me, and I'm talking, I don't mean me, but God says we want him to forgive us, but we don't want to extend that grace and mercy to the next person to forgive them. Hmm. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. There it is. We are to be an extension of the kingdom of God. So if God forgives and he does, we need to emulate that and do the same. Amen. The scripture doesn't say, well, if they come back and ask for your forgiveness, then you forgive them. That's not what it says. Or if they do by, right by you, then you forgive them. That's not what it says. It says, when you stand, pray, forgive. That's what it says. Y'all see that in y'all body? <laughs> All right, just want to make sure I'm not making something up. <laughs> now go to Matthew chapter 6. Book back, Matthew chapter 6. Prayer is important in our, our posture of prayer. Well, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. Hmm. Let me turn there. I want to share a couple of commentaries. See. Where we are in our inner man is very important when it comes to prayer. We can't approach God any kind of way. We might want to pray or answer that we haven't dealt with our shortcomings, our sin and uh, <laughs> iniquities. Uh, uh, All right, it's about to be Matthew chapter 6, verses, four, verses 14 and 15. But if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive your trespasses. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Same passage of scripture, 
were saying things. For if you for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So God says, hmm, we want Him to forgive us. Then forgive that person who trespassed or came against you or said something wrong or talked to talk 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 behind your back. Forgive that person who stole something from you. Forgive that person who lied on you. Here's one. Forgive that person who's going around telling everybody that hey, you never helped them or you don't even know that you did. Just forgive them. <laughs> Verse 15, but. See, there's a but. If you forgive not, not men that trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So that's a condition on that. That means that we have to do something. I don't know why it's so hard to forgive. I don't know. Thank you, Lord. And if it's hard to forgive, your prayer must be, Lord, it's hard for me to forgive them. Help me to forgive them. And God will honor that prayer, church. He will. Here's a commentary on that. Jesus gives a startling warning about forgiveness. If we refuse to forgive others, God will also refuse to forgive us. Again, that's why some people cannot, they can't move forward in Christ. They can't move forward in life. There are some people still upset with somebody from back in 1974, 85. I've heard people say, I still can't forgive them, and that person is dead and gone. 